Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna solve an example of beam element in FEA. So for this beam we have the mechanical property elastic modulus 200 gigapascal, we have the second moment of area, we have the length for each element, we want to find the vertical displacement at node vertical and slope at node 2 and 3 and also the reaction forces at node 1 and 2. So here I have two elements each element is going to have uh, two nodes. So in general, before solving it, I know my stiffness matrix should be six by six because I have three nodes and each node has two degrees of freedom. So I'm going to just replace the values in my stiffness matrix. The stiffness matrix is uh, based on the length and I have the elastic modulus and I. The length for element one was five meter, so six times five would be 30 for element one, and for element two was 2.5 meter, so six times 2.5 would be 15. And then I populate the rest of my stiffness matrix. So here I'm showing it you in, in Excel, you have the stiffness matrix for the first element, and you have the stiffness matrix for the second element. And these two stiffness matrices are in local coordinate, that's why they are, uh, four by four or they are in their local stiffness matrices so i can write them in a global form so i would have six by six so i just added uh, two rows and two columns and change my four by four to six by six so i can add them together later on so i write my global my local stiffness matrices in a global form because the form in, is in global, but still I don't have my global stiffness matrices until I add them together. And here if we add them together, then we have our global stiffness matrix or assembled stiffness matrix, which is a simple addition of the two matrices. So I need to uh, come up with my loading matrix as well. Each element is going to have its own uh, loading matrix. So for element 1, I have the forces that are applying in, M, in node 1, F1 and M1, and then F2 and M2. And then the rest would be 0 because they are associated with the third node, which is not part of the first element. And remember, in, uh, in a separate video, I talked about finding the equivalent load on each node. In FEA, loading is only applied at nodes. We can apply loading on the elements. So we need to find the equivalent load on each node. And this is, these are the equation for the equivalent load on the first node, equivalent moment on the first node, and, and so forth. So we're just going to replace it with the value that we have. W is 25,000. L1 is 5 meter divided by 2, and so forth. So we have our uh, two loading matrices. The difference between the two is just uh, the length that we have here for our first element and our second element. And if you want to find the global loading matrix, we just add them together. And then we have our global uh, loading matrix. Now it's the time to apply boundary condition. Looking at the problem, we're going to have boundary condition here as well as here. For this case, we know that there is no V1, there is no deflection, and there is no slope. For this case, or theta 1, for this case, we don't have any deflection. So the first row is associated with the first nodal variable. I've written all of them based on U to be consistent. But we know u i1 is simply v1, this one is theta1, this one is v2, theta2, v3, and theta3. Because v1 is 0, we're going to set the first row and the first column uh, 0, or remove the first row and first column. You have to remove the second row and the second column as well, as well as the third row and third column. So after applying the boundary condition, we are technically dealing with by with a three by three matrix. So that's make our job much easier. We can find the nodal uh, 
variables. So to find a nodal displacement or so nodal variable, u is k inverse of f. So we get the nodal variable, which uh, this one is associated with theta 2. This is v3 and theta 3. These were the remaining nodal variables that were not, uh, they were not zero. And if I want to find it in a, write it in a global form, I just add the rows that I had removed. So I can find, I can have six by one nodal variable matrix. If I want to find a reaction force, you need to remember to add the rows and columns that you removed from your stiffness matrix. So this is the original unreduced stiffness matrix. And this would be my displacement that I found. And these are the loading on each, uh, on, on my elements. So I can find the reaction force here for node uh, one has a reaction force and a reaction moment and node two only have reaction uh, force.